Use the task manager often. It is an awesome tool for troubleshooting your system. There's lots you can learn from the task manager. Go through all those tabs and learn about what the task manager can offer you. You can analyze a lot of information and troubleshoot a lot of problems. So make sure you use the task manager. This is an effective and simple tool to use when analyzing your computer. It can be opened in several ways. You can right click on the taskbar and select task manager. Of course, you can go to your search option and type task manager and that'll show up. You can also access it by pressing control alt delete and selecting task manager or control shift escape and that'll bring up the task manager. And it's good to have those shortcut keys in order to kind of bypass any applications that are giving you trouble. And you can also go to the run prompt and type T-A-S-K-M-G-R. And when we do so, we bring up the task manager. This is for Windows 8.1 Pro, and I'll maximize that. And you can see here we have different tabs. First is the processes tab. This shows applications that are running and background processes the CPU usage for each, the memory usage for each, the disk usage, and the network usage for each of those. Different programs will use more CPU power. Right now, there isn't much running on this Windows 8 system. I'm just connecting to it remotely from another computer, and I'm not really running anything on it besides the task manager. And you can see it's only using 0.1% of the CPU. That's it. So that's the processes tab. You can see all of the various background processes and applications that are running. I have Microsoft management consoles running as well. And if I close those, for example, the embedded lockdown manager, if I close those, those will be removed from the apps section. So you can see that we can also close these directly from here. We can right click and say end task. You could do that for the apps or for a particular background process. Maybe the HD audio is giving you trouble. You can right click it and select end task. So it's not only an analysis tool, but allows you to end tasks and programs if they're not responding. We also have the performance tab. And we've shown this before. You can see the percentage usage for the CPU, the amount of memory that we're using, which is right now 1.4 gig out of 15.9 total. You know, this is the AV Editor computer. It has 16 gigs total. So we're only using 9% of that memory right now. Shows the disk usage. And you can view all that information one at a time just by clicking on these. The Ethernet usage, pretty low right now. Not much happening with the send and receive on the Ethernet connection. The Wi-Fi is not connected right now, but you could view that as well. So it's a nice tool to use to view what's happening with all of your components in your system. You also have the application history, which will show what your applications have used as far as CPU time and network uh, connection bandwidth as well. And that's, you know, whatever program you're using, OneNote or Skype or the calculator program. And we have the startup tab, and we've shown this before. Previously, you would have the applications that are configured to start up automatically on the system. Previously, this would be shown in MS Config. Now in Windows 8, point, uh, Windows 8 or Windows 8.1 or higher, it's shown in the Task Manager. And from here, you can right-click these and disable or enable them as you wish. Now, if you were to disable one of these, you would have to restart the system, and then that program would not work anymore. It would be disabled. But it doesn't actually turn them off uh, right away. If you wanted to stop that program, you'd have to do that from the Processes tab. We also have the Users tab, which shows by the user what percentage of uh, CPU and memory and everything is being used. And you never know, you might have other users connecting remotely, or you might have uh, different users working with the system. So there's a variety of possibilities with that. So you can check which users are using the most CPU power. And it's also good to check if uh, a malicious person is trying to utilize your system for other means. 
Then we have details. The details gives you more information about the executables, about the processes that are running on your system. And if we right click on one, you can see, let's say, uh, NVTray, right click on that. You can end tasks from here. And there's a lot more you can do as well. For example, you could set the priority of this guy. By default, they'll be set to normal, but it could be that you want a specific program to use more CPU power. And so you could set that to above normal, high, or real time. Be very careful with real time, that could cause your system to not respond properly. And each of these executables is given a process ID. And so you can stop these processes here by right clicking and selecting end task, but you could also do it within the command prompt with the task kill command and do it either by the name of the process or by the process ID. Every time these processes run, they get a different process ID number. And you can see what the status of these processes is as well, and it gives descriptions of each of those. Then we have the services tab, and from here you will see what services are running, whether they're running or stopped, and you could right click on these and start and stop them from here as well. And so this is similar to the services console window. So they kind of add that into the task manager and the task manager becomes a more powerful program within newer versions of windows. So those are your tabs. And again, if we look here at uh, the processes, we see that really nothing much is running. It's all at 0%. Uh, and if we go to performance, we see that really the CPU is not being used very much. It's a powerful computer and it's not really doing anything right now. But if we take a look at the Windows 7 computer that I'm running right now and bring up that Windows Task Manager, you can see we have a lot of tasks running here. I have the remote, de uh, remote desktop connection, which is to the Windows 8 system. We have administrative tools open, we have PDFs open, we have Pro Tools running, we have Camtasia running, and so on. So if we were to go to Performance tab, you'll see that we have a bit more CPU usage. Uh, it's hovering at about 18, 20%, and we're using about closer to four gigabytes of memory. And the more I do within the system, the more this is gonna go up. If I was to run a virtual machine, this number would go up a lot higher. If I was to open additional applications, this number would go higher. And you can see it's spiking at about 33%. And we can look at the processes from here and see what's running, how much memory they're using. And you can sort these by column header, by the way, in any version of Windows. And you can see here Pro Tools, oh wow, it's using 264 megabytes of RAM. The Acrobat Reader, which has a giant PDF open, is running 165 megabytes of RAM. The Camtasia Recorder is using 100 megabytes of RAM. So you can see all that here. And you can go to Applications, see what's running. Again, Performance. And you can look at this in different viewpoints by double-clicking it. Uh, you can see the services that are running. So it's fairly similar, but you'll notice a couple differences. Uh, here, Applications is first, but in Windows 8 and higher, you have Processes, which is first. Processes is listed second in Windows 7 and in Windows Vista. Also in Windows 7 and Vista, you don't have application history, and you don't have startup, and you don't have details. So a little bit, of, a couple differences there, but for the most part, the task manager is essentially the same. And this Processes tab, I use this a lot, whether in the Windows 7 task manager or Windows 8, and it's really good to see what the processes are using and being able to shut those down. And again, also the performance tab gives you a nice view of what's happening on your system. This looks a little different in Windows 7 as well. In Windows 8, you can select each uh, object within the system. In Windows 7 and Vista, it kind of gives you all the information in one, uh, one page but it doesn't get into much about the disks or the ethernet connection. You'd have to find that information somewhere else here in Windows 7, perhaps by using a resource monitor. So different versions of the task manager, but most of it works pretty much the same way. So you want to know how to open a task manager, what the different tabs are in both Windows 7 and in uh, Windows 8, and by the way, one I didn't mention was the networking tab in Windows 7. That is separate. 
You don't need a networking tab in Windows 8 because you have the Ethernet connection and Wi-Fi connections right here on the Performance tab. But you want to know what each of those tabs are. You want to know how to open the program. You want to know how to end processes, end tasks. You want to know how to end services or disable services or start and stop services. And you can go to Startup and enable or disable uh, programs from here by right-clicking them and go to the Service tab and start and stop services from there. So different options here. You want to know how to do all these different things within the Task Manager. So take a look at Task Manager on your system and uh, take a look at what the system is using. And it can give you a good idea of how your applications fare and how your system fares with those applications. So that's about it for this sub-lesson. That's the Task Manager. Check it out on your systems.